We're gonna be doing a new giveaway. The D&D Beyond Players Bundle. In that bundle, we have the Player's Handbook, the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, Xander's Guide to Everything, and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So we're gonna have tons of character options. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below on the video so you're entered to win a great giveaway coming from us very soon. All right, guys, welcome back to Urge. Moving on to the sub in subclass series to the next subclass, which is the Clockwork Soul Sorcerer. Oh. Jameson, Alex here, as always. It's me. If you're new to the channel, to the subclass series, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the abilities gained in this subclass, then rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy, based on how the abilities gained in this subclass improve on the base class abilities. Right. So, without any further ado, Alex, take away. All right. So, Clockwork Soul gets some fun little things called free spells. So for you sorcerers and people who are learning about sorcerer, Sounds like it's not correct. Well, it is in this book. As both subclasses in this book give you free spells that you know that don't count towards your spells known list. Which okay. is important because it's for sorcerers. Again, you don't get that very often at all. So it's alarm, protection from evil, good, aid, lesser restoration, dispel magic, protection from energy, freedom of movement, summon construct, ooh, fun, greater restoration, and wall of force for your free clockwork spells. Also... And this is fun as well. Whenever you gain a sorcerer level, you may replace one spell you gained from the feature with another a spell of the same level, but the must, new spell must be Abjuration or Transmutation spell of magic from the Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard spell list. So giving you access to spells you may not normally have as a sorcerer. And finally, gives a uh, nice little extra flavor thing for Manifestations of Order. For maybe things that might appear around you, like your skin glows with a brassy sheen, or the hands of a clock spin in your eyes, you know, clockwork soul. So these little nice little manifestations, a little extra RP flavor to your appearance that might make you stick out a little bit, at the very least. Also at level one, we have Restore Balance. When you see a creature within 60 feet is about to roll a d20 with advantage or disadvantage, you can use your reaction to prevent the roll from being affected by advantage or disadvantage. So essentially, you can just cancel advantage or disadvantage, mm -hmm. and ally has disadvantage, like a rogue, cancel that out because you can't get sneak attack if you're disadvantaged. So you cancel that out, give that sneak attack. You can use this feature in rope times equal to your proficiency bonus, regaining all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Then at level six, we have Bastion of Law. As an action, you can expend one to five sorcery points to create a magical ward around yourself or another creature you can see within 30 feet. It lasts until you finish a long rest or until you use the feature again. The ward is Represented by a number of d8s equal to the number of sorcery points spent to create it. When the warded creature takes damage, it can expend a number of those dice, roll them, and reduce the damage taken by the total rolled on those dice. So that does let you split that up. So if you get hit once, you don't have to spend all of the die at once. It's not, right. not a one-off shield. It's a you got those dice to choose from. So if you get hit by an arrow, I'm just going to use one die and reduce right. that from 10 to 6 damage. Yes. So you have the option. It's like the retro or proactive healing. Mm -hmm. You're... You like it's almost it's almost like temporary hit points, it, but kind, it kind it's of, kind of weird, but yeah, because you're reducing damage instead of preventing it or or healing so, it after the fact, yeah. Right. Then at level fourteen we have trance of order. You gain the ability to align your consciousness to the endless calculations of Mechanus. As a bonus action, you enter the state for one minute. For the duration, attack rolls against you can't benefit from advantage, and whenever you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw. You can treat a roll of 9 or lower on the d20 as a 10. Once mm -hmm. you use this bonus action, can't use it again until you finish a long rest, or you spend 5 sorcery points to use it again. So you basically have reliable talent for everything. On, on ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws. Which is uh, definitely going to come in handy. Yep. A lot of time, and it only, you know, you get one for free, but uh, 5 sorcery points after that. And again, I think it's important thing to emphasize there, and for the final ability, which will come up here in a second is you have number of sorcery points equal to your level, and you get them back at the end of a long rest. Now, once you hit 20, you do get four back per short rest. <laughs> but, but uh, so you get, it's you got to be smart with using your abilities to make sure you don't burn them in a hurry. Right. Finally, at 18, you have Clockwork Cavalcade. Word I still don't know what it means, because I haven't looked it up yet. <laughs> but as an action, you summon the spirits in a 30-foot cube originating from you. The spirits are intangible and invulnerable, and they create the following effects within the cube before vanishing. They restore up to 100 hit points, divided as you choose among any number of creatures of your choice in the cube. Any damaged objects in the cube are repaired instantly. 
And every sixth level spell or lower on creatures and objects of your choice mm. ends in the cube. Once you use the action, you can't use again to finish a long rest until you spend unless you spend seven sorcery points to use it again. So if you look at the last two abilities, they're both once per days, unless you spend five and seven sorcery points respectively to pop them again. Yeah, so a little bit of a hefty price on there. Mm -hmm. But that being said, that is all of the abilities in the subclass. So now we're going to move on to the rating portion. First up is roleplay value. Asterisk, as always, guys. When we're talking about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, avoiding combat, non-combat scenarios, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about class fantasy, history, lore, background. That's on you as a player. Can't rate you as a player, but we can rate the abilities gained in this subclass and how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. So, with that out of the way, um, on here there are definitely some interesting options that are available to you. There are some uh, pretty solid abjuration and transmutation spells that can be available uh, for RP purposes. Yep. Uh, things like Alarm, Dispel Magic, things like this can definitely impact things outside of the combat. Yep. Um, with the rest of your abilities, however, besides the Trace of Order, where you're able to get your reliable talent for your ability checks and saving throws... It's going to be more focused on the combat side of things because you're either going to be giving someone damage reduction or cancel advantage disadvantage on uh, a roll. Now, if someone has disadvantage on some kind of, I don't know, ability check for whatever reason, they're either exhausted or something, you can or cancel that out. You've got a big guy with lots of armor disadvantage on a stealth check. Sure. You, you yeah, can. That is, you that can. That is true. That you is can. True. <laughs> That is true. As a so, heavy armor wearer. <laughs> yes. So there are some very niche uses on that. Sure. But do you really want to use that for those RP scenarios when you only have proficiency bonus uses? It's up to you. Most likely not. But it's... Do you? This is right. So, all around, there's some decent RP scenario options. There also is your capstone, but that's pretty expensive to just use for an RP situation. Right. Though... You know, depending on the campaign or the circumstance, being able to restore an object, uh, completely repair it mm -hmm. instantly, try an ancient artifact or something, could be very helpful. Yep. Uh, but or, again, very niche. Or canceling some, you know, charming mind control -y effects yeah. that might be happening. Again, yes. it, it'll, and it's, it's not about, like, the ability isn't good and useful for RP. It's the cost of having to do yes. it again. It's expensive. Again, if, you, if you're at, you know, 8 p.m. in the evening and you're at some gala... You probably aren't going to see combat again for the rest of the day unless a fight breaks out at the gala. Right. So then you, you feel more free if you haven't used it to go ahead and use it that one free time. Or if you have the seven sorcery points left over, you can go ahead and spend it. Right. But like early in the day, you really have to think yeah. about when to use your abilities in your subclass. Yes. So all that being said, we just gave it a flat three out of five on the RP. Mm -hmm. Some interesting choices, though, a little bit on the expensive side and a little bit on the niche side as well. Right. Uh, part of that's going to carry over onto the combat side, obviously, as well. Uh, but, of course, being having access to some extra spells is, is never a bad thing. They don't count towards your spells known. A lot of these are more RP-focused as far as your spell list, so it allows you to focus on your spells known being more combat things. Right. It, you know, they, these are RP spells you might consider taking, so you don't have to worry about it because you've already got them on the list. Uh, being able to cancel an advantage or disadvantage in combat can be huge. Uh, canceling somebody, whether it's your own or one of your party members, disadvantage on against a saving throw can be huge for a spell. Or making sure you know your rogue gets a sneak attack. It's, it had, somebody gave a disadvantage on its next attack. You know, being able to cancel that can be helpful. Again, the issue is the limit is at most naturally, barring crazy <laughs> other effects and items, being able to do it five times in a day. Right. So it's not going to happen all that often. And if you just don't run into disadvantage and advantage much. May not get to use it five times a day. It just depends. Right. Uh, Bastion of Law. I will. As anybody who's newer to five E combat, it is a lot easier to prevent damage uh, than to heal it. As yes. far as <laughs> on the back up. end, because you just can't you can't keep up. If you've played other RPGs, you might have a designated healer who's helping the party get heals. Uh, just can't do that in in fifth uh, edition. You run out of spell slots too fast. Uh, so the fact that you can just spend some of your sorcery points to give yourself or somebody else a, a, a nice shield that's not a one-off shield they can kind of choose how they want to spend those dice to reduce that damage is great challenge is it does cost you sorcery points to use it right uh, you can do as much as you want but you have sorcery points but again your 6th 14th 18th level 
all can chunk into your sorcery point count in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trance of Order, I think, is is very good ability in combat. The fact that it lasts for a minute is great because you're you're rolling a twenty on all attack rolls, uh, pretty much yeah. at, at, at minimum, uh, and and saving throws as well uh, from that point forward or, or higher. And so you're you're going to be hitting at a very high percentage rate with everything right. you're throwing out and saving against anything coming your way for that solid minute. Again, once per day, uh, unless you spend five of your sorcery points. At that point, that's over a third of your sorcery count for the entire day. Right. Uh, and you're not getting them back until you finish a long rest. Until you yeah, hit or spend so. sorcery, uh, spell slots. Right, or you're spending spell slots to get that back, which, you know, in a pinch, might be worth it to make, yeah. make your other spells, make sure they hit. And finally, at 18, uh, you get three effects off your capstone. It's a 30-foot cube. I wish it was a little bit bigger, um, primarily for the, you know, for, so you can heal more people. Because right. 100 hit points is a lot of hit points, but if it's only you and one other person inside the cube, you're a sorcerer, you ain't get that many points to heal anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> you, you probably already, you might get over 100, but by the time you get that low, you're probably not going to be alive much longer. If you get low enough where you can restore all 100 to yourself. Um yeah, repairing objects could be could be a big thing, but I think the for me the biggest thing actually is just automatically canceling every spell level six or lower of your choice. Right. So if you or somebody else has been buffed by a haste spell, for example, you're not ending that spell because you're choosing not to. But if one of your party members has been held person, dominate person, crown of madness, what whatever bestowed cursed, whatever anything polymorph like, polymorph few, e- few, few miles too much. It's eight, easy. That's easy. Uh, any kind of, you know, debuff control spell against them, it, it's not they get to do the re- redo the saving throw, anything like that. It just cancels it. Uh, I think that's super impactful and of course being able to heal a bunch of stuff as a sorcerer is extremely hard to come by. Yep. Outside of Divine Soul Sorcerer, you're not gonna be able to do any healing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. So we went with uh, a solid four out of combat and overall my my one sentence about this kind of goes with the whole subclass is when you do something your subclass is supposed to do it's going to be impactful right for sure but the way this is set up it's like you're not going to be doing it very often right <laughs> so exactly. you've got to be uh, you got you got to know when you're going to pull the trigger on one of your abilities and make sure that's when you want to use it because you ain't doing it many times right and then lastly, we have the overall class synergy. Some of the points we've already made will come into play here. Mm-hmm. Uh, with class synergy, the biggest things with sorcerers are going to be your meta magic options and your sorcery points. Mm-hmm. So, as Alex was mentioning, there are some great options available, though they are pretty expensive to be reusing. Um, either spending more spell slots to be able to use them again, or just burning through all of your sorcery points. You're going to be able to burn through them very quickly, probably quicker than any other subclass, I would think, in the sorcerer pool. Yeah, for sure. Um, Because these are very expensive abilities to be able to use. So, that being said, there's some decent options. Again, getting some extra spells that are known, that don't count towards your list of known spells, is great, because sorcerers don't get that. But the two subclasses in this book were very kind and gave you some options. <laughs> so that is nice to have some extra spells to yeah. know. And it's a good some good schools too. Abjuration, transmutation, pretty solid. Um, I mean, protection basically and, mm. you know, polymorph. <laughs> <laughs> polymorph haste, slow with some good spells on there. Yep. Um, you definitely big useful. stuff, you know, like shape change, mass polymorph. And yeah, there's, there's some big stuff. That you can, you can do some stuff, stuff in there. Yes. Um, so all that being said, some decent options, though... A bit on the expensive side, not a whole lot going to be helping with the meta magic. It kind of actually goes against the meta magic options because your subclass abilities are so expensive with sorcery points. Yeah. So we just gave it a three and a half on the synergy side because there are some good options, very good options. Mm-hmm. Though it does detract from some of your base class meta magic options because they're so expensive. I would yeah. say. You think opportunity cost? For what's sure. what's the best thing you're giving up to do one of either doing your abilities again or are your meta magic options you're spending your points on? better choices than what you're reusing your crazy abilities are. So you've right. got, again, I've said it three or four times, but you've really got to be smart with your decision-making yes. in order to maximize this class's, the subclass's effectiveness. Right. So that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. But before we finish, Tasha has a quote for all the subclasses. And what is the one on this one? I rarely tell people that I speak Modron because invariably they just want to learn how to curse. Let's get this out of the way now. Lesson one, beep boop. And other slams. Wow. 
<laughs> Alright guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. So if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, leave a comment down below, make sure you're entered in that giveaway that's coming around soon. Yeah. Uh, I always love to read your comments about your campaigns and stories and thoughts about videos you want to see, thoughts about the subclass. And as always guys, thanks for watching.